Hey everyone, in this lecture we are going to talk about the mechanisms related to the carcinogenesis and uh, first of all we will uh, go with some normal uh, processes that happen in our uh, cell or the systems um, for the uh, prevention of the carcinogenesis. Following that discussion we would then uh, discuss about the molecular mechanisms uh, relating to the carcinogenesis. Okay, the normal regulatory genes which are present in the body, uh, they are the proto-oncogenes, the tumor suppressor genes, the apoptosis genes and the genes causing the DNA repair mechanisms. Now about the proto-oncogenes, these genes are uh, generally not expressed in a well differentiated cell. However, they may express, start to express when there is cellular injury, when there, when there needs to be some cell growth again. But uh, their abnormal expression, their abnormal expression without the growth factors or without any physiological demand, uh, that is their constitutive behavior, their constitutive behavior, uh, it's constitutive behavior is generally, uh, constitutive behavior would cause their uh, increase in the synthesis of the gene products without the physiological demand, okay. Now we have the tumor suppressor genes, uh, the most important being the uh, retinoblastoma gene and the TP53. Again, TP53 is also a DNA repair gene and apoptosis gene. Now, apoptosis is important because it would lead to programmed cell death of the tumor uh, if the cell is mutated and uh, suppressor genes we are going to talk in a moment. And again, the DNA repair is important. Uh, DNA repair is important for the, uh, for the process of repairing of the mutated DNA and thus it again prevents the uh, tumor formation. Okay, now generally speaking, the for the mutation would should affect both the alleles so as to show its effect uh, so as to show its phenotypic effect however sometimes the haploinsufficiency as is the case with haploinsufficiency that uh, only one of the allele is damaged and uh, still um, we see the uh, the tumor uh, formation or the tumor genesis um, this is in haploinsufficiency phenomenon is also important uh, in some uh, other genetic diseases like Marfan syndrome, uh, Erler Danlos syndrome, because uh, in those what happens is that there is a defect in the collagen formation. And now, if there is uh, collagen, you know it is made up of three uh, chains of the protein. And now, if one of the chain is defective, then it would uh, cause the misfolding of the other two uh, chains. And uh, therefore, uh, uh, the defect in only one of the allele uh, would cause problem to the. Uh, formation of the collagen and that would lead to uh, various effects that are in the, in the sequelae of the Marfan and uh, the Erler Danlos syndrome. So uh, similar is in case of the tumor suppression tumor suppressor genes too. Okay. Okay. Darwinian selection. Cancer cells undergo Darwinian selection. This is a very higher principle over here that uh, uh, let's say for example we have a uh, cell uh, that uh, has some abnormal division and uh, it acquires some uh, initial mutation that causes it to divide uh, divide uh, more in comparison to the physiological demand now um, if uh, uh, it keeps on dividing the tumor suppressor genes are activating act activated and uh, all those mechanisms are happening uh, for the proper suppression of the, this neoplastic formation but uh, let's say the tumor cell acquires some mutations that uh, have the effects that uh, that has the effects that the normal tumor suppressor genes cannot suppress so uh, because these mutations are able to keep the uh, proliferation active the, therefore they are called as driver mutations this one would be the initial mutation the following mutations of the initial mutation would be the driver mutations afterwards as the tumor progresses now uh, one thing to remember over here is that uh, the original original initial mutation is generally uh, seen in the population uh, if if there are uh, three cells then uh, one would have this population although two may not have because uh, one cell would have uh, died because of the tumor suppression activity right and these two have no new driver mutations because they are selected preferably over the other uh, two because the initial mutation was not enough to uh, have the uh, proliferative capacity under the circumstances of the tumor suppression. Now, <clears throat> this ultimately leads, <clears throat> sorry, this ultimately leads to formation of the 
uh, heterogeneous uh, cells, uh, population of heterogeneous neoplastic cells, because they have different mutations that have survived under different environment, right? Tumor progression, it is the ability of the tumor to be become aggressive over time. Now, the tumor to be appear uh, clinically, it almost undergoes about 30 cell divisions, 30 cell divisions. And can you imagine how many uh, mutations it would have acquired in the uh, during these divisions? It would have been almost Darwinianly selected. Uh, moreover, uh, the Darwinian selection is very important in case of the drug resistance. Now, what happens uh, in the drug resistance is that uh, let's say we have a, a stage one cancer, uh, st stage one cancer of uh, some lung, and uh, it has some initial mutations, um, let's say X mutation, and we have the uh, therapeutics for this uh, X type of mutation. However, um, as the cancer cell uh, progresses to the stage four, uh, we, it has accumulated uh, these type of mutation XZ that uh, that do not respond uh, to the treatment and they actually uh, are resistant because um, they have the mutation capacity they are Darwinianly selected and uh, they can easily survive the uh, those suppression suppressing uh, drugs right so this is very important uh, to know that uh, the Darwinian selection uh, is uh, sort of a the cause for the drug resistance um, epigenetic modifications can also uh, cause the tumor formation now uh, two you know, things are there uh, the dna methylation and histone modification the dna methylation uh, causes the dna to become silent or inactive and uh, i can stop here and ask you a question that uh, why uh, the what genes do you expect uh, to be methylated for tumor formation excellent um, they are the tumor suppressor genes or the apoptotic genes which would uh, if they are inactivated this would cause the uh, proliferation of the tumor now histone modification um, depending upon the type of modification they may cause the silencing they may cause silencing or they may cause the expression of the uh, gene okay now, before we uh, read the examples for the disrupted proto-oncogenes, let's discuss about the what normally uh, how they signal um, during the non-neoplastic proliferation um, uh, during the time of the normal physiological cell growth. Okay, so the general idea is that we have a receptor, we have a growth factor that comes to the receptor. The receptor somehow activates um, some molecule uh, next to it and this molecule again activates the other types of molecules and they ultimately lead to cell growth. Okay, now, <clears throat> sorry. Now, ultimately, it is the disruption in this uh, whole pathway that causes the, uh, the problems in the uh, that problems that cause the tumor uh, formation. Now, um, the tyrosine kinase is the most common receptor that is associated with carcinogenesis. And uh, RAS, the RAS being the key mediator, this one, the RAS being the key mediator molecule uh, in the tyrosine kinase pathway. Now, it's very high to know about the signaling pathway of the RAS because um, it's often uh, shows up on the examination and also um, important from the therapeutic uh, point of view because we have the uh, problems in these pathway itself, um, these uh, genetic pathway or the transcription factors that cause the uh, tumor to form and uh, because these pathway ultimately lead to cell growth okay so the problems in these pathway the defects would ultimately lead to the tumor formation or the carcinogenesis so uh, we have this uh, the RAF or MAPCK pathway and another is the PI3K pathway. Now the initial mechanism of activation uh, of the RAS is that growth factor comes. We, then we have the growth factor receptor which is usually tyrosine kinase. And then uh, we have the RAS being activated because of the GTP that attaches to it. Then Ra RAF uh, rapidly accelerated fibrosarcoma gene is activated. Then MAPCK and finally the MIC or the cyclin D gene, which are the trans sorry, not the gene, they are the transcription factors that uh, ultimately lead to the cell growth. Okay, and uh, the another would be the PI3K1 that RAS is activated that leads to PI3K to activate, 
leading to AKT and ultimately leading to MTOR activation that again causes the cell growth and division. Now defect in the RAS pathway as I've already mentioned is one of the characteristic hallmark features of the carcinogenesis and it is uh, seen and that mutations in the RAS pathway upstream or downstream uh, they are involved in the tumor formation or the carcinogenesis. Now the defects can be in the tumor uh, that secrete the growth factor as we know that we have this receptor and uh, the tyrosine kinase and the growth factor. If the tumor is secreting excess of the growth factor uh, it would cause the excess of activation of the uh, signaling pathway and uh, now this follows some uh, autocrine loop because uh, the tumor is itself uh, ultimately if there is cell division the tumor is itself uh, secreting the uh, growth factor and it's causing a formation of autocrine loop instead of the paracrine where the uh, normally the fact growth factor comes from uh, another cell okay now the mutated uh, tyrosine kinase um, receptor can also be present over here uh, that uh, when there is growth factor coming and we have def uh, defective uh, tyrosine kinase receptor uh, it actually does not require the growth factor and uh, it ultimately uh, causes the automated action and without any growth factor presence um, so it ultimately leads to the uh, activation and of the other downstream pathways and causes the cell growth again now uh, we have some um, like HER2 receptors uh, in the breast cancer uh, which are uh, mutated and uh, act by this mechanism. Um, so we have some therapies for the HER2 receptor and uh, they have shown uh, to be effective against um, the tumor progression. Now the MET gene is uh, associated with the poor prognosis. It is a tyrosine kinase receptor gene. A MET gene usually seen in the lung carcinomas is uh, involved in the poor prognosis because um, it, it is a receptor gene that we obviously have no um, treatment for it. Now uh, the mutations can also arise in the PI3K, RAF, MIC and cyclin D as we are going to discuss in the subsequent um, slides. Okay, so now first let's discuss, let's discuss the RAS gene mutations. Now the RAS protein, um, what, what happens for the activation of the RAS protein? We have this RAS protein. Now the tyrosine kinase causes the GDP to uh, GTP formation. Act normally GDP is attached to RAS and it is in inactivated stage. But when GTP is attached to the RAS, it uh, forms, uh, it, it activates and the RAS uh, finally activates um, two two pathway PI3K pathway or the PI3K pathway or it may also activate the uh, RAF pathway RAF which finally uh, leads to activation of the MAPCK and PI3K as we have already discussed goes to the AKT and ultimately causes the formation of MTOR which both cause the um, cell growth right now uh, the ras however uh, if it is involved is the key mediator it must be tightly regulated the ras protein is tightly regulated by the intrinsic gtp activity that causes the hydrolysis of the gtp uh, which causes the activation of the ras and uh, these enzymes are called gtp is activating pro these uh, enzymes are gtp is activating proteins and they ultimately cause the inactivation of the ras which would ultimately stop the uh, cell growth so uh, you can say that uh, GAP acts as a tumor suppressor and it has a tumor suppressor activity. Now the mutations can arise of course uh, in the uh, downstream pathway as well and hence we are discussing the PI3K pathway too. Now the PI3K uh, is the gene which ultimately leads to cell growth as you know already but uh, as in the case with the RAS it is also tightly regulated by the P10 uh, tumor suppressor gene. As in case with RAS, the GAP regulates uh, the RAS activity. The P10 uh, is the analogous that uh, sort of uh, negatively regulates that suppresses the P PI3K pathway and uh, causes the uh, stopping or decrease in the cell growth or cell division. Now the PI3K is uh, associated commonly with uh, endometrial carcinomas. 
now uh, we need to discuss about the make and cycle in d2 um, you can blame the biologist for discovering so many things um, but yes they are the transcription factors make and cycle in d and make has three mechanism of action that it express uh, it increases the expression of cycle in d it upregulates rrna and it has the warburg effect um, the warburg effect uh, refers to the conversion of the uh, that, that switching of the aerobic respiration to the anaerobic respiration uh, in the neoplastic cells um, we, we would discuss this thing in the subsequent sections now the mic causes uh, also sometimes may cause the activation of the telomerases um, the telomerases which uh, are the causes the anti-aging effect and hence may also involved in the tumor progression and uh, now the mic is uh, regulated at all the levels of the protein synthesis um, be it the transcription factor uh, regulation, the gene regulation, or the uh, translation regulator, or after uh, the post transcription or the post translation modification. Now, the cycline, uh, the second one would be the cycline, and the cyclines uh, ultimately cause the cell growth. And uh, the cycline is dependent upon. Uh, say, let's let's go one step backwards and see what is what happens in cycline. Cycline is activated uh, with the cycline dependent kinases, uh, and the cycline dependent kinases when activated, um, they cause the uh, ultimately mitosis or the cell division. Now this uh, CDKs are inhibited. They are tightly regulated by CDKIs. Okay, cycline dependent kinase inhibitors. And uh, again, you can imagine if there is a defect in these, uh, both of them, if there is a gain of function in this uh, CDK, it would cause excessive cell growth. And if there is loss of function in the CDKI, it would cause again the tumor formation. Cyclines regulate the G1S progression in the cell cycle. And uh, uh, you know that cell cycle has two steps for the, as the uh, feature, two steps when there is checking. Uh, it is G1S and G2M. Cycline uh, is, causes the stoppage or regulation at the g1s phase now as i've already mentioned the cycline if there's gain of function in the cycline it causes excessive cell growth and cell division and leads to tumor formation or loss of function in uh, cdki that is the inhibitors of cycline uh, causes excessive cell growth so with this we have concluded our uh, section on the uh, molecular carcinogenesis uh, we would deal with the examples uh, related to these in the next lecture